I'm Rich Hayes. I'm the manager down here at the Route 4 facility. We're going to show you around. We reman injectors, turbos, we balance the turbos, clean housing sometimes, VP44 housings, got a soda blaster. We blast those in. Got a guy that tears down injectors. When the cores come in, he tears them down. Goes through all the cleaning process. Bags them up, takes them into the clean room where they'll be uh, built back up to to spec and test it on the test stands. Hi, I'm John, and I tear injectors down. And when I start, I come over here, I use this to check the solenoid, and then I move down here to this to loosen up the nozzle. After I get that loose, and I bring it down here, And then we take it apart. That is a part now, so after we get it apart, then we put it in the sonic cleaner, turn it on, and we set that in there. We use these sonic cleaners to clean our parts, and after that's done, blow them off with air, rinse them off with solvent, blow them off again, and then they get buffed, and blow them off again, and then they're put in bags, and uh, taken into our clean room, where they'll be assembled. We got a uh, big HEPA filter, like they have in the hospital. When you open the door, the air goes out, so none of the dirt comes in. Hi, my name is Brandon. I uh, build common rail injectors here at Area Diesel at the Route 4 building. This injector here is a 0986435520 injector. Uh, this injector here is for a 6.6 .6 liter LMM. When the injectors come to me, I test their solenoids with the uh, FSA 050. Once the solenoid test good, I come over and I start assembling the injector. These are some of the internal parts here. Our, our internal screw, we got our, we got our springs, we got our shims. They all stay with the same holder. Then we install uh, brand new nozzles, valves, and uh, O-rings. And they are part set as well. So all the internals of the injector get sonic cleaned and assembled here at the Bosch build-up stand have all new internal parts. These here are all the shims we use to build our Bosch common rail injectors. Every shim that is in the injector we have here. Build the injectors here and they get tested on the 815 stand. The Bosch EPS815 test bench with the common rail injector package. In it I'm testing injectors that belong in a 6.7 liter Dodge. I'll start the test with a clean run. We keep our most commonly used tools in there. Don't need to take them out. There's different holders for different style injectors. You can run four, you can run two or one. Okay, they just started. This is just a short run to get them, get them primed up. The screen shows delivery for each injector and the return amount for each injector. When they pass on this stand, they get a clip. And this is our Bosch quality scan. When 
they pass, we print out all the results. The serial number, the repair ID, and the box quality scan code all along with the results. So this is done now with the clean run. Kind of wait for it to stop. And I'm going to open these doors up. And I'm going to remove these injection chambers. What that will do is let me see if the nozzle is sealing under pressure. And the leak test will also let me know if there is an internal leakage or if an external leakage such as a crack in the holder, a bad O-ring. So I'm going to wipe these dry. And now we're ready to start our leak test. The first leak test is only at 50 MPA. And the second leak test is at the maximum pressure that these injectors can handle. That's to check all the internal parts. So that was the first leak test. And now it's going to start increasing the pressure. I'm just doing that, it's still showing me what the return leak is, which they all look great, and I don't see nothing leaking. One thing we watch for too is uh, the solenoid nuts under them threads. If there's a bad O-ring, it could leak down the side of the injector. If it has any bad internal parts, if something was not torqued right or uh, assembled directly, the return hot leak would be very high. Yeah, it's at maximum pressure now. After this leak test, I'll put all the chambers back on, and then it will test things um, like full load, emissions, flight load, pilot injection, several different test points. So the leak test is over. Um, here I checked that they did pass the leak test. Um, also on this, it has a serial number for each injector and the date that they were manufactured. So I'm going to go ahead and replace these injection chambers. I think everything looks good and now we will run our full test. This is a 6.7 liter Dodge injector of a 07 to a 2010. It runs two leak tests first. I already did those just to see if it's leaky internally on one of the tests and then externally on another test. And now it's going to be full load delivery and return. Doing delivery first. stabilizes and gets a good reading because it jumps around at first. But the test specs 140.20 to 155.8. Now it's going to test return, return quantity. It's got four different test steps that it goes through. Each has a different uh, here we have our Ken Diesel bench. This is where we build our Magnum line of injectors. 7007 for a Ford 6.4 liter. This piece here is where I compress the nozzle down as I tighten the nozzle nut. This item back here is the device in which I measure my needle lift in my nozzles. And the computer program here 
test my PZO stack. These 7007s, 6.4 liter, are PZO. Um, so they have a, a PZO stack. And this computer here will test that PZO. Press enable burst to perform average energy and loss energy measurement. I can repolarize it and then uh, energy burst. Repolarize the PZO at 130 volts. And then I enable burst. And this is waiting the injector analysis. This will give me the average energy that the stack consumes, and it will give me loss energy, what it takes to basically close the injector. Over here is a report, and all the specs for the PZO stack is in. Average energy is 21.4 millijoule, and loss energy is 5.0 microjoule. This PZO here would pass that test. Our DX611 test bench. Just test about anything on here. We got an 01 to 4 and a half Neuromax LB7 injectors on it right now. It's testing the solenoids right now. Those are all good. Now it's going to start up. It'll go up on its RPM until it gets to where it needs to be at. Like 1500. External leaking now, so while I'm doing this, I'll look at them, make sure they're not leaking from anywhere. And it just runs all by itself all the way through all the test tests. RPM and then the real pressure. Got two minutes, 18 seconds left on this. And I'll kick into the next step. Now I'm going to do a return test. See how much return it is. This is our EUI stand electric unit injector. I'm going to run a 3406E CAT injector. It goes through four or five different steps, 450 RPM, then 625 RPM, then 900 RPM, and then 100 RPM. And it'll run until it gets a stable reading, and then it'll automatically switch to the next RPM. Uh, and it is kind of loud. Gonna <laughs> set the supply pressure at 90. This is just a startup speed. Once it gets warmed up a little bit, it'll kick in the next one.
this is our IFT 70s uh, Hartridge test bench. Right now we got it set up to test mechanical injectors. One of the other ones we do down here are electronic. They have a solenoid. These are all just ran by pressure. So this it'll tell me what the nozzle opening pressure is right here. Let's push start. And then you can raise it or lower it by removing shims or adding shims. Okay. This is our uh, laser. Laser on our Magnum logo on and you can put it on tags. We uh, serialize our injectors with it. And this is what we're going to laser on this piece of metal here. Then I have to, this is how you focus it. You got to line up the two dots. Line them up. And now it's in focus. Hi, I'm John. I tear the turbos down and clean them up for reassembly. Let me check it, make sure everything's good. That's the part, now we mark every piece and I take all the small pieces, soak them over here. I'll soak this in here and then I'll blow it all off and then I'll take it over and blast it clean. Blow the remnants of the dust off them and then I put them in the build-up room on the shelf. This is our turbo build-up room. And so the tur turbo supplies that we have to build them up with. Um, Woody works in here, and John does too. They uh, build them in here, assemble them. I'm Woody, Route 4 Turbo Department. This is my build-up room. 
where I build all my turbos at. Right now, today, we're working on 6 liter Ford turbos. We do several different turbos here, but this is what we're working on today, where we build the bearing housings all the way up to one of these with the wheels in them, everything else before we go over to the balancing room. I've already got these cartridges pretty much built up other than putting wheels in them. So uh, I don't know, maybe we can show you how we do that before we move over into the to the uh, balance room. Turbine wheel, pressure wheel. A little bit of assembly lube. I got these cartridges built up all the way to this point. In other words, all the uh, other goodies are in here. Back plates and oil slingers and all that good stuff. Do this on every one of them. Of course, each turbo is different. These six liters are pretty easy to do, really. Wondering why my bearings are staying in. I put, I put assembly lube between the shaft and the bearings also, so it kind of holds them in place. There we go. Piston ring is set. On my mark. There we go. Compressor wheel. Good. Got one twenty or so. Should be lined up on a mark. Good. Then make sure there's no play. Everything seems to be fitting really nice. Six liter turbo. Center cartridge. Ready for balance. Now the balancer is set up with a Holson HE351, which we'll move in there and do that next. This is our balancing room. This is our high speed balancer. It's where we bring our center cartridges after we have them built up in there. We spin them to balance the internals in them so that we don't get a bunch of vibration when they're on the machine that they're going to be operating. We'll come in here and we'll select the uh, turbo that we're going to be working on. This is an HE351, just in case anybody's wondering. Uh, we'll inject with oil. Brings up oil, fills the tank, fills the cartridge full of oil. This is demagnetizer, demagnetize and then remagnetize the shaft. This thing works on a couple of different ways. Works on vibration, works on magnetic. That was a demagnetizer. Now we'll remagnetize the shaft, which is just basically taking a magnet and pulling it back and forth off the shaft to remagnetize it. Should be good there. Now we're going to bring this in. This is set for this already. Might make a little bit of noise this time. They wind up like they're on a vehicle. We round these up to about 54 to 57,000 RPM. Eight hundred fifty-three thousandths, which is within our tolerance, but since I'm doing this for demonstration processes, I'll, uh, I'll take a little bit off and we'll get it even closer than that. We always try to protect everything inside here. There's going to be metal shavings and stuff coming off. Glasses on. As you can see, it does not take much at all. Others, but this 
this one here was pretty darn close already. And then we'll do this again. Yeah, and I'm going to call that good, very good actually. We can't get them a lot closer, but take some time. And like I said, it was already within tolerance, so there's no sense in wasting a whole bunch of time trying to get it any closer. But that's what we do in our balance room. And then I'll take it out of the mark, the uh, balance weight on the bearing housing. 0.0390 and that will go on record so this turbo wherever it goes will have a record on what the balance is on you'll have a, it'll put a dot way out here or there wherever it's at the imbalance is uh, let us know where the imbalance is whenever it balances you can bring it to like right now I could bring this back to where we stopped at right there where the that's the unbalanced. We're at 42. So I'll, I'll do this again just to show you. I'm going to mark this where the unbalanced is, which we already had a mark on the other one before the first time. And we'll go ahead and get it closer. What the heck? You got a minute, right? Alright, We'll have to change that balance number now. No, that's okay. Now we're at one two zero. Don't get much better than that. Like I said, anything in that green circle is uh, in our tolerance. Anything below one point one nine nine is uh, is in our tolerance. So we're well beyond our tolerance. 